the Oregon Trail people were like the first cross-country road trippers. And we all love a nice cross-country road trip across America. These guys really did it in style in these prairie schooners. Did you know that you can still see the Oregon Trail today? The Oregon Trail was once used by pioneers who spent months on the trail traveling west to destinations like Oregon, Utah, and California. After the railroad came along, the 2,000 mile trail was mostly forgotten, but in the 1970s it was declared a National Historic Trail commemorating its impact on the American West. The National Historic Site is located in seven states including Wyoming and Idaho, which will be the focus of this video. The trail features a number of different attractions including original wagon ruts, historic landmarks, pioneer cemeteries, and interpretive centers. The trail is governed by the National Park Service, making it one of the most sprawling national park sites in the country. The Park Service teams up with local agencies to help administer many of the sites. The crazy thing is, it isn't that hard to visit an Oregon Trail site. Many road trippers drive right by interesting sites and don't even know it. Hey everybody, my name is Matt with We're in the Rockies and today I am in Idaho along the Oregon Trail. Behind me here is the Oregon Trail. I actually came down through that hill and crossed that river behind me. Of course, I've got a prairie schooner on one side of me here. And in this video, I wanna share with you some sites along the Oregon Trail. I know I've talked to a lot of you and you're traveling cross country. And so if you are driving across Wyoming or Idaho, you are probably driving along the Oregon Trail for the most part. And so there are a number of interesting sites that you could stop at that might be nice little additions to your road trip. So I have visited eight Oregon Trail sites that I want to share with you today. First one is in eastern Wyoming. This is called Guernsey, a little city called Guernsey, and they're called the Guernsey Trail Ruts. There are Oregon Trail ruts all over the Oregon Trail, okay, but probably none better than the Guernsey Trail ruts. These, they actually went over kind of a rocky area. They're not just little ruts in the ground. No, they have actually carved ruts all the way through the rocks so that you can actually stand in the rut and not see above the ground. Okay, here we are at the Oregon Trail ruts, and uh, David F. and Linda think this is just a big prank. <laughs> Somebody came over with a jack camera and made it. Because otherwise they'd just drive around. Dave we'll go, wants to know why we'll they didn't go down this trail right here. <laughs> why didn't they just push their carts on the sidewalk? Yeah. That gives you a nice visual of how many wagons traveled across the Oregon Trail. In fact, there were about 400,000 people who traveled the Oregon Trail over about a 20 year period, maybe close to 30 year period. And so almost, almost half a million people traveled across the Oregon Trail. Now you can see ruts here where I am on that mountain side back there, that uh, part where it's kind of coming down like that, those are actually the trail ruts from the Oregon Trail. Okay, the, the second site I want to share with you is Independence Rock. This is in the middle of Wyoming. It's a state park today, and if you go there, it's kind of just this rock that juts out of the ground. It's kind of a rolling rock. You can actually climb up the rock and get to the top. There's a little trail that goes around the rock. So why is this rock important? Well, it was kind of a, a spot along the Oregon Trail where people could sign their names. So it was kind of common for the pioneers or for the immigrants to sign their names into the rock and leave you know their mark along the trail so of course you know we would consider this sort of a graffiti thing today but i mean back then that was kind of a rite of passage to sign your name along uh, on the rock at independence rock okay the next site that i want to share with you is martin's cove this is actually right by independence rock and so there's a little rock formation near martin's cove called devil's gate so the the people along the trail would go through devil's gate and at Martin's Cove, this is actually run by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so this is kind of a reminder here that the Oregon Trail is not just the Oregon Trail. It was called the Oregon, California, and Mormon Trail. Today is often shortened into just the Overland Trail. But the point is, is that there were three main groups of people traveling the Oregon Trail. There were people going to Oregon for green pastures. There were people going to California for gold. And there were people going to Utah for God or religious freedom. So those were the Mormons. And at Martin's Cove, many of them got trapped in a winter snowstorm and had to survive there for five days in this winter snowstorm. Many of those people were traveling with hand carts. 
So most people along the Oregon Trail used a cart similar to this or used a wagon similar to this. This is not a Conestoga wagon. Those are much larger. The Oregon Trail people used prairie schooners, which were smaller and more mobile. The, uh, some of the Mormons used hand carts. They literally just pushed a cart along the trail and a lot of them got stuck at Martin's Cove. So that's another site that you can visit that's right by Independence Rock. Okay, so the next place that you can stop is South Pass, Wyoming. Now, South Pass City, there's actually two things that are kind of historically significant about this. So first of all, the early Oregon Trail people, Oregon and California and Mormon Trail people were heading out west. Getting through the Rockies was the great challenge. And so they ended up finding this spot here that comes through Wyoming called South Pass that was the easiest spot to get through the Rockies. This became the thoroughfare, the highway of that Oregon, California, Mormon trail. About 20 or 30 years later, they actually discovered gold here and set up a mining camp and a little city. And today that city is kind of a ghost town, although there actually are some inhabitants here and has been continuously inhabited since 1869. I think it's Wyoming's second oldest city or something like that. But the, the ghost town section here has been turned into a state park and is a really well-maintained, really cool little spot to visit here. And it feels like it's completely in the middle of nowhere, but, uh, but kind of a cool little spot. One of South Pass, bringing up South Pass here, is that although that was the main route that the Mormon, Oregon, and California Trail went through. After South Pass, it then divided up into multiple different routes, again, based on where you were going. So the Oregon Trail people going up to Oregon, of course, California going to California, and then the Mormons going to Utah. There was also a number of cutoffs that people used to try to speed up the route. They were always just looking for a faster way to get through the Rockies. And so one of these guys came up with a faster way, what he thought was a faster way. His name was Hastings. He came up with the Hastings cutoff. He sold this his cutoff to a group of emigrants who were late in the game. They had gotten started late. The problem is he had never traveled the cutoff. These immigrants got stuck in the Sierra Nevada mountains because of this poor cutoff and ended up resorting to cannibalism. And by now you probably know I'm talking about the Donner Party and that's how they got stuck there. They tried one of these cutoffs because they were kind of desperate because they were running late and it did not end well, obviously. Timing is kind of another issue to bring up here, actually. The timing was really important on the Oregon Trail. If you started too early, you would get bogged down in the mud of the Great Plains and the oxen wouldn't have enough food. If you started too late, you'd get caught in the Rockies in the snow. And so the timing was extremely important, which meant that the trip, which was around three to four months long to go from the Mississippi River all the way over to the coast or to Utah or California, wherever you were going, it's around three or four months long. In order to do that, um, there, it wasn't like there was a continuous string of wagons all summer long, right? They were all starting at about the same time in the spring and then ending at about the same time in the fall. And so, which meant that the trail was packed. It was just like rush hour, you know, on the highway. It was a really packed trail all summer long as they moved across the Great Plains. Okay, the fourth site to visit is Montpelier, Idaho. So Montpelier, Idaho is on the north end of the beautiful Bear Lake, which straddles the border of Idaho and Utah. In Montpelier, Idaho, they have a big Oregon Trail Center, which is pretty cool. They have a lot of Oregon Trail artwork, and they'll actually take you on a simulated Oregon Trail ride. It's kind of kind of a funny little ride, but they do. They have they have a guy that teaches you about it. You can go sit in one of those prairie schooners and kind of go on a little ride there. Um, it's a nice little center if you're if you're in the area. And there's actually some other things to do there. There's um, the Butch Cassidy Museum where he robbed a bank in Montpelier. And then there's again beautiful Bear Lake, which is kind of a resort area with you know you can go to the beach and do a lot of boating. But one thing we can learn from there in Montpelier is that the mountain man rendezvous were also held. There was at least one mountain man rendezvous held near Bear Lake there. So this is kind of a reminder that the mountain men were the early guides for the Oregon Trail. So the mountain men time period was around 1820 to 1840. They were out here mostly to get beaver pelts. That's what they were trying to get and they were trying to get those for top hats. Top hats were the thing that was popular back then. But the mountain men were kind of put out of business by China. They started making silk top hats and that kind of put the demand for beavers out of business. In Pinedale, Wyoming today, there's the Museum of the Mountain Man that you can visit. 
But once those mountain men became unemployed, pretty much, they, they it just ha so happened that the Oregon Trail was kind of starting up that, that westward migration. So they ended up serving as guides through the Rocky Mountains because they were the early ones who had been wandering around the Rockies and knew the ways through. Okay, now the next site to visit is in Soda Springs, Idaho. This is just a tiny little town. The more famous feature in the town is a geyser. They actually have a natural geyser there that they have hooked to a timer and it goes off every hour on the hour. It's kind of a funny, quirky little stop there. But the other thing they have there in Soda Springs is a park named Hooper Springs Park. This is a place that this, this area is where the springs come, where the water comes out of the ground, carbonated, naturally carbonated water comes out of the ground. So this was an area where the Oregon Trail people would stop and fill up their water and get some fizzy water. They would bring some flavoring for the water to put in their fizzy water and they would have some natural soda pop, basically. So that was kind of a fun stop for people along the Oregon Trail to get some soda pop. They had some hot springs there too, where they could take a bath and kind of rejuvenate themselves. Kind of an interesting little stop. It's a beautiful little park to stop at. So if you're going through there, you might be going through there like on your way to Grand Teton National Park or something like that. That's a, kind of a fun little stop if you like history. Okay, the next Oregon Trail site is the Craters of the Moon National Monument. So this is a national monument in the middle of Idaho that is called Craters of the Moon because there's a lot of lava rock there and it looks like you're on the moon. It's really lava rock as far as you can see. It's really kind of a quirky spot, a fun little national monument to visit. You can do some camping and hiking there. I've been there a few times and it's, it's, it's kind of cool. And they actually did train for some of the moon landings at Craters of the Moon National Monument, which is cool. But it is also an Oregon Trail site. And that's because one of the guys, um, his name was Goodell, he created a cutoff to go around Craters of the Moon. Of course, it wasn't a national monument at the time, but he went through that lava rock area and thought that that was an easier path to get to Boise than um, coming down through here today, like through this area here where the river is. So uh, Goodell's cutoff went through Craters of the Moon National Monument. Okay, the last site to visit here is Three Island Crossing. This is in Idaho. I'm, I'm now pretty close to Boise, Idaho, like, like between Twin Falls and Boise. And here, again, they came down that hillside right there. You can kind of see a little bridge over there that they would have come down. And they face the difficult choice of continuing on that side of the river, which was an extremely difficult path, very fraught with danger, or crossing the river, which was also really hard, but then getting to an easier path to get to Fort Boise. Most of them opted to cross the river. Plenty of them died crossing the river or lost their oxen or their wagon or their goods or whatever. Um, but they still felt that was a better choice than going on the other side of the river, which is kind of a little life lesson there that we are often faced with choices in life of not just good or bad, but between bad and worse. And we often have to choose bad over worse. And so a little life lesson along the Oregon Trail, those people, um, even though their crossing was a river, our own personal crossings a lot of times, fairly similar in concept. Pretty fun thing to learn about the Oregon Trail and a really cool thing to visit to see the sites where they traveled. I have done many more videos on Idaho, on Wyoming, on the national parks that you're going to see out west. Check out more on my channel, my website, we're in the Rockies.com. I sell travel guides with audio guides that have stories, kind of like what I'm telling you here. So um, thank you so much for watching and until next time, go west, young traveler.